Hey everyone, it's Kevin with Pangea here with Patient Zero just to talk a little bit about why this guy is so special and why everyone raves about him so much. So as you can see, he has a pretty unique pattern. Basically, he looks like he's gilded in gold over top of this very pale translucent skin all over him. And a lot of people in the hobby labeled him as piebald. And arguably piebald is just a description, but the way we see piebald in humans and the different types that we experience in other animals, including mammals and reptiles, it's not really the same thing. So those are genetic in a very specifically inheritable way that we're able to see through generation after generation. And a lot of medical science has been dedicated to researching piebaldisms and the other associations that it has. But this guy wasn't born looking exactly this way. And although we don't have all the information on him, I can give a brief little history on him. Basically in 2012, we acquired him after observing him online, seeing the former breeder post about him, and uh, our owner, Matt Parks, decided that this was a worthwhile investment. So he purchased Patient Zero as well as Patient Zero's offspring at the time, and since then, we've held on to him and been breeding him um, almost every single year, trying to see if we can get uh, any kind of resemblance to his awesome pattern uh, through multiple generations. So uh, through best practices for line breeding, we've brought back generations that we've split off and brought them back together. And still we haven't been able to produce anything for him uh, or that looks just like him. So we're at the moment don't believe that his traits are inheritable. At least the, the traits that people find most appealing. The, separation of the pattern as well as the black eyes. Um, he does produce gold tigers where if you look at his back you can see that he is basically a yellow tiger and he just happens to have this um, kind of incredible pattern on his body. Right now there's a few theories on what might cause it or what might be happening here. Long story short vitiligo, vitiligo as some people say, right now we think is what has caused this appearance. Uh, vitiligo is it's an autoimmune disorder that in humans uh, basically causes the immune system of the subject to erase chromatophores, or rather in, in humans, melanocytes, the type of chromatophore that makes melanin. Uh, in him, possibly since the types of chromatophores that exist in crested geckos is greater variety than it is in humans, it's possible that he does still have the same affliction and it's just affecting all chromatophores, not just melanocytes. When he was younger, I uh, don't have a specific date for it, but we'll put a photo up for you. We can show that there was a time when some of his pattern was actually different than it is now. Specifically on his head and on his face, you can see that that pattern has migrated away or it's reduced. Um, this is part of the reason why we believe this to be vitiligo because of the transformation over time versus piebaldism, which would be in most cases or in humans and most animal cases, piebaldism is at example at birth and doesn't change through the animal's life with the exception of how the body changes and the pattern might differentiate a little bit there. But patient zero has changed slightly over time. That being said, that's our leading theory. There's a couple other theories that are possibilities, which would be some sort of piebaldism or something possibly related to the new genes that we're seeing that do something similar to the black eye appearance, which would be cappuccino and sable. Uh, while we don't believe that he's a cappuccino or sable, we're not sure how his genetics would interact with either one of those uh, traits right now. So, so far, this trait has not been inheritable via our production, but he's not the only animal that actually has this representation. He may be the best or coolest looking one with his gilded look, but other breeders, including ourselves, have other animals that have piebaldism. 
Uh, some of these cases, it's toes, some of it's some other spots. You'll also see some other animals online that actually just have really heavy scarring, which does tend to kind of have a similar, uh, similar appearance. But uh, generally, if you see an animal that has that kind of appearance in this area, it's usually mating scars. So the other theories being paradox or something related to those two genes that I mentioned earlier, while being a possibility, don't seem as likely as something like vitiligo. And he's been so used to us handling him for his approximately 15 years that he's basically just a really chill guy and still hunts for crickets, still uh, licks your finger when you've got Pangea on it, but he's slowing down at 15. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and learning about this awesome gecko with us. It's very special to us, and we hope that he's really special to you too. Let us know in the comments what you love about Patient Zero or what more you'd like to learn.